Hey everybody, Cole here from Shark and Soft Designs. I'm trying to show you how to make a dragon egg the easy way. And just do it in a pop bottle and use your hand tools. I don't own a lathe, so I'll show you how I do it. I got my chunk of burl and I already pre-sealed it. I just put epoxy with some green mica powder on it just to get it sealed up so when I pour the big part of the epoxy it doesn't soak into it. And I actually got this burl chunk just from a tree that was in my backyard, so it's a backyard project too. So here I'm just getting the burl into the circular shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. The mold is gonna do basically all the work for keeping it circular. And then once you're done anyway, I had to sand the lip bit, so. We'll have to do that, but that's kind of the idea is what it's going to look like once we get going here. And because I didn't know the exact volume, I figured it's probably easiest if I just take the burl, estimate where it's going to be inside of the mold, and then I just put a mark on there with the Sharpie and because I think the epoxy is like close to the same density of the water, I just go by the same amount of liquid, like water, to the same amount of epoxy, and it's, it's pretty close. So I just filled up with tap water just to get it close to my line, just to figure out how many mils were in it, rather than doing any math. Makes life easier. And it came out to about 300 mils. So the epoxy I use, you have to use, it's a two to one, so 200 mils of part A and then 100 marts, uh, mils of part B. And then I'm just using some Mod Podge on the areas that I sanded just to seal everything up so then that way none of the epoxy soaks in because it's so thin it just soaks into everything and this it burls like especially like a sponge so it's gonna soak it all up so I just figured it's easier just to pre-seal it now and you don't even need any tools just do it by hand Mod Podge is just glue just peels off your fingers and like five minutes later Then my next step here is just getting the rough fit, make, making sure that it's actually gonna work out kinda how you want. And then I drilled some just little holes just to hold the burl up and then put some screws into the burl to keep it from floating or tipping. Now we get to the decent part, doing the epoxy. So this is, I used two to one eco epoxy for deep casting. This is the part A stuff and because it's been sitting out for like a year, it's getting cloudy. So I had to heat it up with the heat gun and then you just constantly stir it until it clears up. And I'm adding in food coloring and like honestly just food coloring to give you some color and then it stays pretty good. Unfortunately, I added 12 drops here. That was too many. It turned out too dark. However, when I've done coloring, like food coloring before with other projects, sometimes it soaks into the wood and then you can't really see anything. But this time it didn't soak in. So then you add your part B. So that's the 100 mils. The other part was 200 mils. And then stir the living hell out of it again. Um, you wanna make sure that this stuff's like thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. If not, you're gonna have wet spot, like sticky spots where it didn't combine and it's gonna have holes in your resin or bubbles in your resin. So you can see here that it's getting to be mixed up pretty good, but you can still see that there is like little stringers behind. So once I slow it down, you can still see it like whips around 
but just keep stirring it'll clear up eventually i stir for i don't know three to five minutes maybe more i don't really time it i just make sure that i stir a lot And then even when you think you're done stirring, stir it a little bit more by hand. Cause you can see that swirl right there. Kinda nasty. It's a little easier just to get big, big motions with your hand compared to quick, quick ones with the drill. So then you can see a couple seconds later, cleared up a lot nicer for ya. Now you just pour your epoxy into your mold. Luckily mine had a little air gap in there. So this is actually working as like the double potting technique. So double potting is where you take your epoxy and pour a really thin stream like I'm doing here. And that helps to break up the micro bubbles even though this stuff's gonna break up the micro bubbles as it is over like the 72 hours it takes to cure and harden but pouring this little stream like that helps to get the air out of it and unfortunately didn't measure correctly and you can see that there's a huge gap so kind of had to dick around <laughs> and i grabbed just took the screws out of the burl and then i ended up having just to submerge it by hand and, you know, like an idiot, I left the stupid label on so you couldn't see anything. But, in the next shot, I cleared that up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, like I said here, took the screws out, taped it down so then that way it's not going to float. And you can see that there's a little air bubble trapped in the middle there, that like clear part, or like opaque part. Eh, it's, it's what you get. I kind of had to do it at a whim, so it looked pretty sweet. This is 72 hours later. She's overflowed a little bit and cured to the cardboard, so it's like it's stuck on there. So it's like, it's rock saw this stuff is super machinable like you can cut it with the saw you can router it you can sand it it's like rock hard and it sands like super easy too which is nice and after a little bit of farting around i got her demolded and it actually came out freaking pretty sweet so I do have to do a little bit of work to it just to get it egg shaped more or less. But this clarity is like the, as clear as I got it. So the top, I have to chop that off and the base, I gotta square that up. And you can see when I stick my thumb into this, it's still soft enough that you can stick your thumb in. So I left it another 24 hours to dry, but it was really like two weeks cause I never got around to working on it again. And after that, I actually chopped off the top and I hot glued that onto it and just stuck a screw into that. And that's how I held it as my lathe. Um, so you can see here it spins, obviously with a huge wobble because I didn't center it perfectly. That's totally fine. I was trying to just use the random orbit sander, but it kept just shooting the sanding pads off. So I sanded it all in the same technique as I'm doing here just hold it with your hand and sand from 80 120 220 320 grit 400 600 800 or something like that and then this plastic stuff is a plastic polish that you can use on like headlights to give them clear them up and with this stuff i just use a t-shirt and put it on there a liberal amount started slow just so a, because this stuff gets grippy after a little while. So you kind of want to go slow with it to begin with. But then once it like, once you get the hang of it, you can 
speed your drill up as fast as you want. I just kept it on like one on the low setting so it didn't go shooting off. This is what it looks like when I got it all polished up. Obviously it's super opaque still, not the best but it's got some pretty decent clarity to it. I'm happy with that because when you put a finish on it, it's gonna really clear it up. If you have all the time in the world, work through your sandpaper, work through all the wet sanding and grits, but I was just lazy. This is an easy technique. Just use some rubbing alcohol to see how it's gonna look like with the finish. So then this way, you can see how clear it's going to look with the finish on it and it dries super quick. And speaking of drying super quick, so does clear lacquer. So I just put a quick coat of clear lacquer on it. Clear lacquer takes like, literally like two minutes to dry. So as soon as I was done spraying it out in the sun, let it sit for two minutes, spun it around a couple times, and I could already handle it. So this is what it looks like with just one coat of lacquer on it. Honestly, probably do like four coats and you can do four coats within like, let let it dry for 30 seconds. I let it dry 30 seconds between and then I polished up the lacquer and this is how it turns out. So it clears up really well. Uh, honestly, that's the easy way to make a dragon's egg. It's not perfectly see-through. You can't see my fingers here, but you can do your own colors and techniques. Came out pretty sweet. Thanks for watching.